Well, let's talk to Peter Matthews. He's a professor of political science in Long Beach in California. Morning, Peter. Thanks so much for joining us. So 50% disapproval ratings, eight days. Are you surprised? Not really. Looking at uh, Trump even during the campaigns and what he said and how people reacted. But here's a major issue right now. I think it's a tension in a democracy such as ours between security and liberty. And this has always been in the country's uh, history and setting when as far back as the Alien and Sedition Acts got through uh, Congress or passed by uh, John Adams, one of the earliest presidents, all the way through Japanese internment camps in World War II and then the anti-communist uh, witch hunt under Joseph McCarthy, there's always been this question, how much freedom should we allow people without jeopardizing the security of the United States? And I, I'd like to quote one of the founding fathers of the country who said that those who give up essential liberty for uh, a, a temporary sense of security don't deserve either. So there's a major problem here, and Donald Trump has taken one side of it, and there most Americans are on the other side saying that we should not give up the right to have people uh, be able to worship and have their own freedom of religion, and there should be no establishment of religion. I think this action of Trump's could actually impinge on the establishment clause of the Constitution as well, which says that the government cannot establish any particular religion or favor one religion over the other. In this case, Donald Trump has come out and said in interviews with the executive order that Christians from Syria will be given favorable treatment to enter the United States over Muslims. That is an est that's violating the establishment clause right there. Well, what do you say to what he said about the, um, the way that he brought about this executive order, um, Donald Trump I'm talking about? Um, the president has said that if he'd done it any faster, if, if he'd given any warning about what he was going to do, he would have, there would have been a rush of, quote, bad dudes into the U.S. I mean, what do you make of that? I don't uh, accept that because uh, you cannot scare people into uh, rushing the process, the rule of law is important for this country. It, need, it takes time sometimes, and there's been no rush of bad dudes coming in. In fact, most of the terrorist acts since 9-11 have been conducted by people that were either born in the United States, born here, or were legal re residents who were living here and since 9-11. But in 9-11 itself, countries such as Saudi Arabia, the UAE, and Egypt provided most of the terrorists on those airplanes, and yet Trump has not banned anyone from those countries. That's very interesting, isn't it? Well, it's also interesting that he didn't ban any of those countries. And on the day that he announced these, this ban, he did have conversations with those countries. And you had U.S. special ops going into Yemen for the first time. Yes, indeed. And those, all of those uh, actions raise a lot of questions. I think we cannot lose uh, the soul of America in this mad rush to overreact, as some of the Trump people are doing here. And I think it's completely against what the United States is about. The very character, the soul and heart of America is freedom of choice on religion, of protecting people's expression, freedom of expression. And all this is being threatened by some of these actions of Donald Trump and executive orders that he's bringing in so rapidly to, to basically placate his base. The base who elected him, he thinks, are the people that want this. And I'm wondering if Stephen Bannon didn't have something to do with this. Well, let's, talk about, let's talk about the rule of law. You mentioned that earlier. And this morning, we've had this... Um, situation unfolding where we've had the Attorney General come out, the Acting Attorney General come out and yeah. say, listen, I don't think this executive order is legally defensible, um, it's not lawful, and then Donald Trump turns around, sacks her and appoints another Acting AG. Why didn't he just wait? Because he's waiting for um, his pick for that top job at the Justice Department to be given the okay by the Senate. Why didn't he just wait for that? Why did he go ahead and sack Ye uh, Attorney General Yates? He should have waited. He absolutely should have waited to respect the rule of law and the procedures that are in place. Instead, he jumps the gun in order to make sure that he can have someone that supports his position. And I think that's indefensible when you look at how this country should be run as a democracy. There are certain rules and regulations that are required. And there are many, many Democrats and Republicans who have said that Mr. Trump was wrong in these actions, all the way from the Democratic leadership to even people like Mitch McConnell, who was critical of this ban that Trump brought in. So it's not just people on the Democratic side, but on both parties that are concerned about this and, and yet, have spoken up. And yet there are still people who do support Mr. Trump and do think that this executive order is needed and support it. Have you spoken to those people and what are they saying? Well, their argument is that it, security of America is paramount. But what I'm arguing is that this action might actually make America more insecure because 
we can create terrible enemies and hostility between the United States and Muslim-dominated countries, where the people are mostly Muslim, who are allies of ours, and we want to, their trust. We want them to be allies with us against the radical terrorists. In this case, what Trump has done is given ammunition to those in ISIS and al-Qaeda who say that this is a war of civilizations and the Americans don't want us anyway, and you know that that's why we're going to fight them with any means necessary. This is something that's fueling, that could fuel, could very well fuel added terrorist support, in my view. So I think Mr. Trump needs to be more understanding of the whole problem that we face here. It's very complex. It can be dealt with through diplomacy, through alliances around the world, and through not jumping the gun on some of these actions of his. Well, let's talk about the president himself. Will he ever back down? We saw when he came up with his statements about torture, saying that waterboarding worked, torture worked, and then he didn't necessarily back down. He said, oh, well, General Mattis doesn't agree with that, so we won't go forward with that. Do you think you'll ever see a time where the U.S. president says, yes, I was wrong? It's very hard for me to imagine this, this particular president doing that, looking at his past record and how he's behaved. Even when he said that the ban does not apply uh, across the board to permanent residents, he said, essentially, we're going to let them come here, but they're going to be extremely vetted, and they might be turned back if, they're not, if they don't pass. So he doesn't want to admit, even when he knows that he should back down, and he does back down. He doesn't want to admit that he backed down. It's a very interesting uh, situation in terms of personality. Just very quickly, Professor Peter, where to from here? Sure. I tell you, the American people have a lot of work to do to get involved in po politics in a positive way. Just as so the word politics means being involved with the community decision-making for and by the community, Americans have not been that actively involved in recent decades. And it's time now that they do get involved. I think this election this year has made them much more aware of the importance of being involved in the right way, in a positive way for the country's future, by being involved in not just voting, but between elections, keeping our leaders responsible. Okay, Professor Matthews, thank you so much.